Hi everyone, I'm back to read the back of the book, uh, Growing Up in 1824, from Happy Birthday, Josefina, Springtime Story, Book 4, 1824. Growing Up in 1824. When Josefina was growing up, babies were born at home. A woman called a uh, Partera, who was skilled at delivering babies, helped the mother during the birth. Afterward, the Partera gave the mother special teas and foods to help her regain her strength. Female relatives and friends helped tend the new baby. In those days, mothers and babies sometimes died in childbirth. Fevers and disease such as smallpox killed many people as well. When New Mexicans were sick or injured, they called on a curandera like Tia Magdalena for treatment. Curanders uh, knew how to make medicines from many kinds of plants. They received great respect for their healing skills and their wisdom. Babies were baptized in the church in the village church when they were only one or two days old. For this ceremony, the parents chose a woman and a man to be the baby's godmother and godfather, or madrina and padrino. Uh, becoming a godparent was an honor and created a lifelong tie between the parents and godparents. The godparents helped teach their child and would take over as parents if the child was orphaned. Children usually had a special bond with their godparents, just as Josefina did with her godmother, Tia Magdalena. A baby received its name when it was baptized. Parents named children for religious figures, such as Catholic saints, angels, and people mentioned in the Bible. In the Catholic Church, each saint is honored on a special day of the year, called a feast day. Many children were named for their saint on whose feast day they were born. Just like Josefina, who was born March 19th, the feast day of San Jose, or Saint Joseph. New Mexican children celebrated their saints' days instead of their birthday or complianos. On the saints' day, a child was awakened at dawn by the sound of the whole family singing a beautiful mananitas or morning song, often accompanied by a guitar or violin. Then everyone gathered at the family altar to pray, and the saint statue was decorated with flowers. There would be treats such as hot chocolate, turnovers filled with fruit or meat, cookies or bread pudding. Sometimes the family put on a puppet show or read out loud from a favorite book, and they gave the child gifts such as fruit, nuts, or handmade toys. The child also had the honor of giving small presents to others. On Josefina's Saint Day, she and Papa would give gifts such as chocolate or coins to all the workers on the rancho. For young and old, Saint's Day, Celebrations were a welcome break from the hard work of daily life. From an early age, boys helped the men plant and water the fields, harvest the crops, herd the animals, make rope, and repair farm tools. Girls fetched water, feed the chickens, and tended the babies. They helped the women with housework, laundry, mending, gardening, and cooking. Children's work helped the family survive. Children were also expected to be quiet, and respectful around grown-ups, including their parents. To show respect when greeting adults, children kept their heads and eyes down and their hands clasped in front of them and didn't speak until they were spoken to. New Mexican children had to work hard and behave respectfully, but they had fun too. Stories, songs, riddles, and tongue twisters were favorite pastimes as people worked together during the day or rested by the fire in the evening. Children played with homemade dolls and toy figures made from cloth, yarn, wool, clay, feather, uh, feathers, and leather. Boys played ball games, and girls played string games sim similar to Cat's Cradle. Popular pastimes from Spain included singing games, such as La Vibora de la Mar, the sea serpent, which is similar to London Bridge and guessing games like El Floron, the flower, which is much like Button Button, who's got the button. 
But Josef, in Josefina's time, young people received their first Holy Communion at age 12 or 13, much later than Catholic children do today. After their first communion, they were no longer treated as children. Girls could wear their hair up and they were allowed to dance with young men. At about age 15, girls were old enough to marry. Marriages were arra arranged by the parents. If a young man wanted to marry a girl, he would ask his father or uncle to write a letter to her parents proposing marriage and describing the fine qualities of the young man and his family. If the girl's family wanted to accept the proposal, they would call on the young man's family after a few days or weeks. To refuse the offering of marriage, however, the family would give the young man's family a squash. This was more polite than saying no directly. Weddings were festive events with a dance and a grand feast that might last for days. Girls like Josefina were raised to be wives and mothers and most married while still in their teens. The few who didn't, like Tia Dolores, usually spent their lives with relatives, helping to care for their families. And that is the end of our looking back in 1824 of Happy Birthday, Josefina. A springtime story, book four, 1824. I hope you liked it. And we will see you next time to read book five.